As we take you to the speaker's platform, you will hear the voice of the Honorable Fiorello H. LaGuardia, Mayor of the City of New York. Morality and justice. He is fighting to keep all of the Americas at peace in a world shaken to its very roots. He is waging at war at this very minute for actual instead of fictional neutrality. He is striving to keep his country at peace. Cordell Hall has been one of the great leaders for the solidarity of the nations of the Western world, which has brought about this new Pan America, and Pan America is now giving more peace to more people over more territory and for a longer period of time than any system yet known to the world. Cordell Hall is no phrase maker of obscure diplomatic language. He is a leader. It is not treaties, it is the will of the people that makes Pan America great. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Gibson, Mr. Mayor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, in the name of the governing board of the Pan American Union, I should like, first of all, to express our gratitude to the management of the New York World's Fair for their courtesy in designating this day as Pan American Day. For myself, I welcome this opportunity to make a few brief remarks regarding the significance of the Pan American movement in the present singularly unhappy juncture of world affairs. Around us here are striking achievements of scientists and engineers, of architects and artists, revealing what could be done for the advancement of the human race if only their genius could be given free scope for constructive effort everywhere. There is a painful contrast between what we behold here and the soul-searing pictures of suffering and destruction brought to us hourly from those portions of the earth in which armed hostilities are now taking place. That contrast should strengthen in all of us a determination to assure an organization of world affairs which would make possible the use of such magnificent technical skill as is here assembled solely and uninterruptedly for the creative work of peaceful progress. The attainment of such an organization of world affairs has always been one of the underlying purposes of the Pan-American Republics. It has always been one of the principal objectives of the great movement of cooperation and solidarity, the ties of which happily have grown ever stronger among our nations. Today, the American Republics are supremely fortunate in that they are at peace within and without our hemisphere. Each of our republics is ready to defend itself against any threat to its security that may come from any part of the world. At the same time, it is the unalterable desire of each and every one of our nations to remain at peace ourselves and to exercise all influence in our power toward the end that just and enduring peace may become firmly established everywhere. Less than a quarter of a century ago, 12 of our American republics were involved in a world war. When that ordeal ended, all of us were determined to devote our best efforts toward the establishment of a world order in which recourse to war as an instrument of accomplishing national aims would be unthinkable. Within the limitations of its own traditional policy, each of our nations has since sought to make its fullest practical co contribution toward the attainment of that objective. 
this attitude on our part is a direct result of our own American experience. From the very beginning of their independent existence, the American republics have sought to shape their international policies in accordance with certain cardinal principles. Crucial among these are, first, recognition that each nation is a juridically equal member of the family of nations. And second, recognition that civilization and progress are possible only when there is universal acceptance of order implemented by international law and based upon justice, fair dealing, mutual respect, cooperation, and the sanctity of agreements freely made, faithfully observed, and honorably altered by peaceful methods when need arises. By applying these principles among ourselves, we have gradually built up in the Western Hemisphere an international system which is our American way of peace. Among the 21 republics are found various degrees of numerical strength and of military power, as well as different degrees of wealth and of industrial and financial organization. Yet, we have arranged and have managed to live side by side. Among us, small countries do not feel menaced by their powerful neighbors. Among us, no group of nations is allied against any other group. Our peace does not rest on fear. There are, to be sure, causes for controversy here as there are in other parts of the world. But mechanisms for resolving them have been set up by mutual agreement. These mechanisms are in operation, and there is a growing realization that just claims advanced by any member or members of the group will be fairly dealt with. All this is the fruit of our persistent endeavors to give form and substance to the ideals which we profess. We have striven for years to remove causes of distrust and friction between and among our several countries. Many of us, including the United States, have had to recognize that mistakes were made and that rectification was in order. We have had to overcome false pride and to correct errors. Much of this has been done, and the doing of it has established faith and trust among the American nations. Our periodic inter-American conferences have played a great role in this development. I should like to recall to your attention the work done by the three most recent ones. At the 7th International Conference of American States held at Montevideo in 1933, substantial progress was made towards removing the individual causes for controversy through agreement on a treaty to govern the rights and duties of states. In 1936, the, the Inter-American Conference for the Maintenance of Peace at Buenos Aires considered the need of strengthening the methods by which the peace of the American nations could be safeguarded and maintained. One result of that conference was a convention for the maintenance, preservation, and reestablishment of peace, which provided for consultation between the 21 republics in case the peace of the Western world were menaced from within or from without. Finally, at Lima last year, the Eighth International Conference of American States, in its basic declaration, affirmed the solidarity of the nations of America based on, quote, the similarity of their Republican institutions, their unshakable will for peace, their absolute adherence to the principles of international law, of the equal sovereignty of states, and of individual liberty 
without religious or racial prejudices. End of quote. With this in mind, the 21 republics affirm their determination to maintain these principles to defend them against any threat from outside our hemisphere, and in the event of danger, to consult among themselves as to measures which might be taken in cooperation for the common safety. At this very moment, representatives of all of the American governments are assembling in Panama for the purpose of taking the measures necessary to safeguard the peace of the Americas. Here, we see the functioning of an international system of cooperative peace designed to assure internal concord and external security for the nations of our hemisphere. At all three of the conferences, important steps were taken in the direction of a mitigation of unreasonable trade barriers among our various countries and between each of them and the rest of the world. At all three, means were devised for strengthening cultural and other relationships, those indispensable foundations of international understanding and cooperation, again, among our various countries and between each of them and the rest of the world. The resolutions and recommendations of the conferences along these lines have been or are being put into effect by the American republics. Here, too, we see the functioning of a system of cooperative peace. We of the Americas are justly proud of these achievements, and yet, we know that however precious, however gratifying is this onward march of inter-American solidarity and cooperation, it is not enough by itself to give our nations the fullest attainable measure of security, progress, and prosperity. In every line of national endeavor, each of our countries is thoroughly conscious of the interrelated and interconnected character of the present day world. Under modern conditions, peace and stability are indivisible in the sense that a major breakdown of one or the other in any important portion of the globe inevitably affects the life of the entire world. For several years, the impairment of normal international economic relations and the disastrous deterioration of international morality in many parts of the earth have retarded our material progress and have filled us with anxiety and apprehension. For the past two years, the conflict that has been going on in far off Asia has cast its shadow upon us too. The tragic hostilities in Europe, the greatest calamity of all, have been in operation but three short weeks, and already their fateful effects have laid a heavy hand upon many phases of the lives of our nations. We know that our nations will be materially poorer and spiritually poorer in proportion as the flames of protracted war impair or destroy in the areas directly involved the foundations of modern civilization. Knowing all this, our nations have sought steadfastly to exert their influence in the direction of an avoidance of a widespread war anywhere. We have endeavored by appeal and example to convince other nations that a system of international relations based upon action in conformity with the dictates of international law and morality, upon fair and fruitful cooperation among nations for the greatest good of all, and upon sound, healthy, and mutually beneficial trade relations, is practicable 
and is attaining. That a system based on these principles is far more conducive to the welfare of each and every nation than a state of affairs in which callous disregard of law and morality with resort to brute force and unbridled violence are the methods deliberately chosen for the attainment of national aims. Now, <coughs> that a major war in Europe is a grim reality. There is greater necessity than ever, than ever before, for all nations still in a position to do so, to increase their exertions for the preservation of those fundamental principles of civilized international relations through the application of which alone we of the Americas are firmly convinced the progress of the human race can be maintained. There is no other basis of enduring peace, of cultural and material advancement for nations and for individuals as well of social and political institutions founded upon human freedom and the dignity of the human soul. It is our devout hope that the conflict now raging in Europe will not extinguish upon that continent the light of that resplendent civilization with which it has in modern times illumined the world. It is our fervent prayer that all nations may find in themselves sufficient strength of conscience, of reason, of the very instinct of self-preservation to return before it is too late to the tried and proven highway of those basic principles of international relations which for the moment continue to function fully only in our hemisphere and in a constantly diminishing area elsewhere. In the New World, we have found that acceptance of these fundamental principles has made for progress and peace. To these same principles, all nations can adhere whenever they choose. And so, together with us, attain once more the blessing of an ordered and law-governed world. Meanwhile, in these hours of tragic trial, it is our duty to ourselves to keep these principles alive in our own midst and to make intensive and unceasing effort toward bringing about adherence to them throughout the world. There you go.